Welcome back to the Talking Cars podcast. I'm Alex Nizek. I'm Jake Fisher. And I'm Jennifer Stockberger. All right. So today we're going to be talking about our 2024 top picks list. And we got some really cool stuff on the list this year, a little bit different than kind of how we've done it in the past. But uh, we're eventually going to get into exactly what's on the list. But before we do that, Jen, if you can tell us kind of what top picks are and right. how you get on this list in the first place. Right. So, of course, the main driver for being on the top picks list is a vehicle's overall score, which we've shared many times it encompasses our road testing here at the track, um, a model's reliability and owner satisfaction from our owner surveys, as well as the safety adjustments, plus and minus mm -hmm. points for important safety features like automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection and at highway speeds, rear cross-traffic warning and blind spot warning. The only little tweak on top picks, though, is we leverage the automatic emergency braking a bit more in that, again, we want it for everybody. It has to be standard equipment on right. all trims of the vehicles that appear mm -hmm. on this list, not where the base trims are left off. Mm -hmm. So we right. average that AEB a bit more for the top mm -hmm. picks. Right, right. Yeah, which is a, a proven safety feature. Correct. And yeah, super important that it's on there. So um, yeah, okay. So you know, over certainly the last year and even more, the market's kind of been changing a lot and, you know, we are responding accordingly, right? We've been up to some things here at CR, working pretty hard. So Jake, tell us a little bit about where we're at, you know, in the market and, and what sure. we've been doing over the last year. And then we'll get into what's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really plays into what's on the list because there's yeah. a lot of cars there that um, wouldn't have been on the list because they weren't really part of the market uh, before. So, I, I mean, obviously, what's, I mean, a lot of people are talking about EVs, EVs, mm -hmm. EVs, and everything, and lots of news about that. But actually, if you look at it, yes, there's a lot more EVs on the market, a lot more EVs sold right. last year than uh, previous years. In fact, the uh, EV um, sales have gone up, up about 50% um, in, in the last year. But what's interesting in there is that if you look at hybrids, mm -hmm. they've gone up even more. Yeah. If you look at plug-in hybrids, um, they've actually gone up in term in more. So yeah. this is a, so plug-in hybrids is probably the most, and we've talked the about underdog. it before on the show. Yeah. I, it's kind of it's kind of like the dark horse, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, this is an opportunity that yes, you could drive them around on electricity in your daily routine, but then if you have to take a trip, you're not looking for right. the, you know, the broken charger or where it is or <laughs> yeah. or, or, or spending doing that planning ahead of time to right. figure out along your route where it's, all the stops are. It's, right? It's the lazy man's way of uh, electrifying you yeah, know, yeah, the car right, because right. it just makes it much much simpler. Mm -hmm. So we and and I say, I mean, all of us really have put a huge amount of effort into. I, I think I didn't make myself very popular in the fall when I'm like, <laughs> we're going to go buy a dozen <laughs> plug-in hybrids and test them in turn in time for this moment. Right, and, right. Uh, you know, the, the crew did an amazing job. Yep. Um, we purchased them. We got them up to miles. We did testing. And it's not even just that, but we did a huge change on our website mm -hmm. where we actually can go and put the information about these and explain exactly what they are. Um, I mean, you know, MPGE people it doesn't even make sense, but to actually explain this is what the fuel economy you're going to get when the charge is gone. Right. This is how much charge, how far you're going to be able to go on that charge, mm -hmm. and just breaking that, and also putting in calculators and understanding really what this means to you. Right. So we have that information now on our site, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, some of these cars, they're great, yep. and they're they made it to top picks. That I best. think it points to two the categories in top picks changes mm -hmm. to follow the market. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Where we didn't ha sure. necessarily have the same <laughs> categories. We still pick 10 categories, but we try and follow. Oh, sorry. We, we change the category. So, so we don't yeah. have so like not a top always. pick for station wagon, Correct. a top <laughs> pick for <laughs> best convertible, best convertible. Yeah. Right. 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 The market is coupe, large coupe. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, we don't to, to your point, years ago, we might've had the best green car and it was the Toyota Prius. But now we can say it's not necessarily just green because yeah, it's all these right, right. trains. Right. Yeah, and the fact yeah. that we we bought all these plug-in hybrids, I mean, I'm excited from a testing standpoint because we've been able to really live with them. So it's not just, you know, drive it for a few miles with yeah. a charge and see what that's like. Yeah, okay, it's different than the hybrid. But, I mean, we're looking at uh, how long does it take to charge it with the included wall right. charger, right? right? Because that's that's one of the advantages is you don't have to, you know, install this 240-volt EV charger and do all this stuff for most of them anyway. <laughs> exactly. And it's not just us. We have to have a certain amount of members who also bought these cars to be able to do the reliability projections. True. So when you say the market, even yeah. our members are buying them right. in sufficient it, quantities to drive right. their reliability. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and we have reliability information on a right. lot of these plug-in hybrids, which we didn't have just a few years ago. Right, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, speaking of members and just kind of getting feedback from from people who are actually buying these vehicles or considering them, um, we got a question from somebody who, you know, watches our show yeah. and it's about plug-in hybrids, really. So it's really timely and it kind of sets us nice. up for our uh, for our discussion on what's on the list. So they're paying attention. Yeah, yeah. they're paying attention. <laughs> and this is great. So Steve from Maine, he says, I've read uh, your most recent reliability ratings and note that while hybrid cars are among the most reliable, plug-in hybrids or PHEVs are among the least. I find this difficult to understand. Surely the technology uh, used in both is very similar, you know, an, an ICE or an internal combustion engine combined with a battery, regen braking, and some software. The only major difference I can identify are the cable to charge and the thing on the end of the cable uh, <laughs> that is the owner. Um, so do you think the problem may be user-related? As a plug-in hybrid owner, uh, I find it it is much more an EV experience in many ways than an <laughs> ICE car experience we are all familiar with. Uh, since your reliability data relies on owner reports, could this be a factor? So this is a great question, so and, and 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 we we've dug into the data, mm -hmm. you know, looking at this, and 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 I'll break it up. Kind of, there's there's two ways to break this this up. One is, it is a little bit of an oversimplification that you know it's not just that. So so look, right. if you take a plug-in hybrid, you know, you've got a powertrain that is able to drive you at highway speeds mm -hmm. um, on electric power. You don't necessarily have that with a, with a pure hybrid. Um, the charging system, we, there are absolutely pro like serious problems that we yep. have, uh, have data on. Right. Uh, the Chrysler Pacifica uh, plug-in. There was actually issues with the charging, the battery cooling. Right. Um, and there's, yeah, a lot there's, of, there's, there's a lot of extra things that go in to make stuff. this work. Extra heating, because in the winter, if you don't want the engine to come on, you got to heat the cabin, right? right? Or things like that. That's so right. That's right. Pressurizing the fuel tank because the, the engine might not run for a long time. So there's a lot of extra stuff but, beyond the cable. But I will say where he's right is it, it still doesn't really account for the reason why they're that much less, less reliable. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you really get into the reason they're less reliable as a group, mm -hmm. it's who's making them right now. Sure. So the truth is, is that if you look at hybrids, for instance, the majority of them are coming from Toyota, um, Honda, um, automakers that make very reliable yeah, vehicles. Right. If you look at the majority of the plug-in hybrids, a lot of them are coming from, you know, like Jeeps, Stellantis, um, a lot of like Volvo. They're building a lot of these. So it's really about who's making them mm. more so than actually what the problem is. And the truth is that if you're looking at a plug-in hybrid from a Toyota, yeah. it's going to be reliable. Right, right. Right, because they're just adding on to essentially an, an already reliable. A proven vehicle. powertrain. That's right. I think right. the other element, though, is their time under the time under their belt. Think of the new powertrains right. as just new technology. And as we've seen time and time again, the longer they're doing it, the better they are at it. So, That's yes, right. Toyota's been in the hybrid market for a long time now. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of time. 20, 25 years of right. making hybrids. Perfecting yeah. hybrids. So those Highlanders and Camrys mm -hmm. and, you know, they're already driving a better hybrid. EVs, same thing. Mm -hmm. Tesla is the veteran now. And right. we see that in right. the Model Y. They've got time under their belt. Now take new EV manufacturers, new PHEV manufacturers, and yeah. there's just not that. So, so right. So it's just new tech. It, yeah. It's it's absolutely right. And, and, and if you look at, you know, again, who's making a lot of them, I mean, you know, you look at Jeep yep. or Volvo, who is producing a lot of plug-in hybrids, they don't have a real strong Correct. hybrid, you know, technology, you know, pool of, of, of right. information like, like a Toyota or Honda it's does. Right. Right. That. right, right. So five years from now, that may all jumble up again. Mm -hmm. Sure. But yeah. there's this tendency to say, oh, all EVs are not reliable yeah, or all right, PHEVs. Right, right, and that's right. just not the case. You yeah, got just I mean, like any new tech, you gotta tease it about. Tease yeah. It. So yep. I think, you know, we kind of summed this up when we were talking ahead of time. And and on the one hand, the message to, to summarize is that PHEVs are complicated, right? right. And they yep. are unreliable as a whole, but that doesn't really tell the whole story. And I think right. I think you said this kind of well and it's kind of funny, but unreliable brands make unreliable PHEVs. And so if <laughs> still land the the, right. the you know Parallel to that would be to say, if Stellantis made all red cars, then we might say red cars are unreliable, right? Yeah. <laughs> correct. So it, it's correct. not quite... Uh, Correlation, not causation. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And to wrap it back to Steve's question, hmm. probably not user error in the reliability stuff. Yes, there's a learning curve to using them, but likely not the cause. Well, what's interesting sure. about the reliability... And, and actually, to, to the plug-in hybrid point, 
Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people who are buying plug-in hybrids are almost going to go out of their way. They're almost enthusiasts about this. And like, yes, we, we did, we, we did the this. talking cars, and we were like, "Hey, they're really confusing." And like, everyone was like responding, like, "They're I really important." Yeah. I just calculate my kilowatt per hour on this calculator, and <laughs> it's, it's no simple. problem at all. It's simple. Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh, sorry." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and there's, um, it doesn't come necessarily down to reliability, but there's this interesting part of plug-in hybrids that's really difficult to capture that I think we're seeing, and it's almost this. I've been calling it this feel-good factor of not having to go to a gas station, oh right? Even yeah. if, you know, on a cost per yeah. mile basis, it's similar in my plug-in as it might have been for a hybrid. The the feeling of never going to the gas station, right? And it's, it's this aspect of driving a plug-in that is kind of unique. Our calculator doesn't say the 20 minutes you save from not having to go to the gas station yeah. and the time is money. We can't capture that. Right, there's no but number it's to definitely put on that. But definitely. But I would look I would look at the calculator and it, it's very interesting because, you know, in terms of cost savings, it could get you a lot of the way towards the true EV, somewhere in between yep. that hybrid and there. And right, depending right. on what your gas prices are, and on our calculator, you could change like what your gas prices are, what am I paying for electri right. electricity? It could change a lot. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right, right. Yep. All right. So the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> that <laughs> we've been finally. teasing for 15 minutes now. All right. Oh. So we got these electrics. <laughs> oh, these sorry. We have to go. <laughs> right. We're out of time. Out of time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so there's hybrids, there's electric cars, there's plug-in hybrids, there's regular gas cars, right? And I, our yep. list basically covers the full What's on the, the list? full spectrum. What's so on the list? let's get to it, right? Okay. But first, after these messages. <laughs> uh, no, so, all right, so first up, we'll talk about EVs. And the one on the list this year is the Model Y. Yeah. Hmm. So, I don't know, tell us why the Model Y is on there. Right, time under its belt. Mm -hmm. And now, for the first time, it's on the list because mm -hmm. its reliability right. record, coming back to what I said, is now at a level that it's good enough to say, hey, this is a top pick. Mm -hmm. And obviously, with the Model 3, best-selling EV in the country, you know, so um, people love them. It's, it's, it's the sweet spot of, of the EVs. Right. They've been around long enough that they're not a brand new car company anymore. Right. So they're working out, you know, making sure the doors can close and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but they're also <laughs> yeah, right. quite the veterans when it comes right. to electric power trains. Absolutely. Yep. So it's kind of a sweet spot. And throw on to that fact that the supercharger network is Can't. just right. yeah. not even. You can't ignore it. Yeah, not even close uh, to the the experience that anyone right. else would have with another EV. At least for now, right. yep. um, things may change, but right now, yeah, this this is this is the right choice. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really mm -hmm. excited to see what happens a year from now when we're in this seat again talking about the sure. list. When you know, supposedly anyway, all the Tesla has opened up their supercharger network right. a year from right. now. Now that they're sharing, right? Yes, yeah, so yep. we'll see maybe how that changes or doesn't change. Yep. Um, all right, so that's EVs. So plug-in hybrids on the list this year. We got three of them. Right. Um, the Prius Prime, the Toyota RAV4 Prime, and the BMW X5 plug-in hybrid. So two pretty similar, but one way different. So one uh, of these things is not these. like the other. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so look, I mean, in, you know, like we were talking about in terms of reliability, um, like Toyota and, you know, they know how to do hybrids yeah. um, and they know how to do plug-in hybrids too. Those mm -hmm. primes, they've been around for a while. They're on, you know, they've got that, they got the reliability down. These are also vehicles that once that um, electricity runs out, they're also extremely efficient, yes. gas right. powered vehicles. Right. Not always the case. Right. Now, which is not always the case. Right. I mean, a lot of people who are buying plug in hybrids, a lot of them are like cheap Wranglers. Mm -hmm. And then, like, mm -hmm. once the electricity is gone, you're getting like, you know, 18 miles per gallon. Yeah. Or something. I mean, I mean, these kind of, you know, not to oversimplify it, but going back to Steve's question, this is a little bit with these vehicles, a little bit like here's the hybrid version, and then just adding on the plug-in. That's right, the bigger battery. That's right. Yes, there's a proven it, technology. They know they know what to do. Is, so they're taking an already efficient system and just beefing it up. And they they ride on the coattails of their own reliability record. That that mm -hmm. Toyota, when they introduce new technology, is very cautious in their implementation. They're very you know, very yeah, slow they've been to refining approach. this for and decades now. So they get to get that award very quickly, even yep. with new technology. Right. Flipping to BMW. <laughs> right. It's different. So now BMW, I mean, this is really um kind of our the topic of kind of like cost no object, yeah, which yeah, really luxurious a, and, and whatnot. Aspirational type It's aspirational. Yeah. And and actually I, I know we were talked about it a lot. I mean Look, BMWs make some really nice vehicles. Mm -hmm. They're really, really nice to drive. Wise. And I think the iX, the BMW iX electric SUV, is amazing. Yeah, like it, you get into ride, it, it's so quiet. The, yeah, and rides it's insane. And I think when it's really kind of like that, no object, whatever, no compromise. I think it was when we tested the X5 plug-in. We're like, wait a minute, 
add to that kind of that experience, like a drive so nice and right. it's powerful and quiet that I don't have to worry about range anxiety yeah. yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got a decent uh, amount of, of battery, so yep. you could actually yep. drive it every day. Yep. Um, but then again, I can take a trip with not that concern. So, right. so to the, that's kind of a part of the luxurious experience, right? Yep. You yeah. know, I mean, not have to worry. Yep. Yeah. The only thing with the, the X5 plug-in hybrid is, you know, for most of these nine out of 10 of these plugins that you can, you can buy, you can get away with that, you know, regular wall charger that we talked about, but the, the X5 has such a giant battery for <laughs> yeah. a plug-in hybrid that right. you really, you know, and cost you, no object again, you would want to wanna take get, advantage yeah, of that. Yeah. You would right. want to get that that 200 I, I think so to actually it, charge yep. it up Great. and honestly it's it probably like 25 hours on the 120 <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably a good investment because yeah. maybe your next vehicle will right. be, be. A, a pure electric yeah yeah but that x5 i mean it's it's amazing even not that you're going to take it on a track but if you do like we did here it it does things that an yeah. suv of that size and, and sure. weight it will please do. any enthusiastic driver any previous bmw driver mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. i think so yep um all right so we also have regular hybrids, right? You might not want right. to deal with plugging in your plug-in hybrid or it doesn't quite make sense for you. Um, want something a little bit more traditional? Camry hybrid, we've seen it before. Yeah. Um, Highlander hybrid and also the Ford Maverick hybrid. Yeah. So I love that the Maverick hybrid is on this mm -hmm. list. One, it's it's the only domestic on this hot pick mm -hmm. list. And we've mm -hmm. already said the Maverick truck is a great truck. Mm -hmm. It's a great size compromising between the big half tons and the smaller, right. you know, smaller trucks and add the hybrid powertrain, mm -hmm. reliable hybrid powertrain. And this is just a great option. It tears at me because I was a rich line gal and now maybe I'm a my Maverick gal yeah. for my future <laughs> truck that yeah, I'm yeah. going to buy. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, the fact that they put it on that, that car chassis kind of yep. goes a long way. Cause yeah, it is smaller, but you're if you don't need that off-road capability and yep. this and that, um, you know, you get a pretty decent size interior considering the the small size of the truck overall. And yep. um, yeah, obviously the the fuel economy of the hybrid. Um, I do want to say on the the Camry, there is a redesign coming, so it's actually kind of a, a sweet time to potentially yeah. get the current. Camry, you might be right? able to get a deal on it. Get a good deal, and it's also yeah. at the end of its current yep. form, right? So, like yep. we talked about, the further something goes into its life tends to get more reliable, right? So it could be a great choice. And clearly the consumers agree with us because they're not even planning on doing a non-hybrid version. Yeah, of right. A Camry Standard hybrid now. I mean, it's just, so again, you know, you look at these Camry, the Highlander, the Maverick, and these mm -hmm. hybrids, it's like, it's kind of no compromise, right? Yep. You don't have to change your way of life. You don't yeah. have to worry about chargers. You just drive the car yeah. and they're quiet and they're comfortable mm -hmm. and they're powerful and all of those things. Um, you know, I mean, the thing about the plug-in is that, you know, it should be said that because plugins are new, a lot of these vehicles aren't available as plugins. So, I mean, in the future, you know, if there is a plug-in Camry or a plug-in mm -hmm. Highlander or a plug-in Maverick, right. it would be really interesting to see how right. they perform. And maybe yeah. that is even a better option. You know, obviously they cost a little more, but, you know, depending on what goes on in terms of uh, rebates, you know, mm -hmm. they may even... There's some situations where a plug-in is actually cheaper. Yeah, true. Because of uh, because it qualifies. For yeah. Sure. Yep. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Ford has that uh, the Escape plug-in, which we also tested. Um, so they could make that. Yeah. That yeah. Maverick. They could. There you go. Fairly easy. You don't want to oversimplify, yep. but sure. Um, yeah, I love that about the regular hybrids is you don't really have to do anything differently than you're Not doing now. You just drive it yep. and you just get and, usually and, and, great fuel. And, and just that, you know, again, that, that Maverick. I mean, it's it's quiet and comfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's really kind of mind blowing. Yeah. Agreed. Um, but if you're not into any of that and any right. electrification, we do have um, some, options. some gas yes. only cars on the list too, right? right. Um, so the Subaru Forester and Crosstrek are both here. And then also the Mazda 3 is on the list. And, and right. Jen, I know we have some kind of interesting statistics about some of these Subarus or even the Mazda. Yeah. So let's start with the Forester. This is the 11th time mm -hmm. in a row oh, that the Subaru row. Forester has been on our top picks list 11 Hard years in that. a row yeah. and at the risk of repeating myself because i've said this this <laughs> car times. just works <laughs> it is the right car for my 86 year old mother because that is what she still drives mm -hmm. it is the right car for a small family it is the right car for a young driver to get and used there's just so many things mm -hmm. and they haven't they've iterated but it's not drastic it's gotten bigger but all the things that we like access visibility yep. that drive this car along with a really good reliability yeah, right. um just put that forester on the list yeah, absolutely. and the cross trek mm -hmm. the same attributes that we love about the forester in a smaller version 
it's still got great access. It's still got great visibility. Mm -hmm. It's still got great ride. All of the high points that we say about the Forester, it's like Subaru put them into yeah. the Crosstrek, um, best fuel economy of a non-hybrid all-wheel drive SUV. Right. In the Crosstrek at 29 miles right. per gallon. Yeah, and their so. their all-wheel drive system is very mechanical. You're always getting power to those four wheels. It's not like yeah. one of these on-demand systems right? that's yeah. a little less effective, right? So yeah, and the the Crosstrek you know, is in a unique spot in that it was just redesigned, yet it's on our list, right? Yeah. We, we typically say full redesign, maybe you avoid, but it was a very um, evolutionary redesign, right? Kind of mild updates, really. Exactly. So that's why it's still here. It's still reliable. And so don't be afraid necessarily of the fact that it was just uh, redesigned, right? Right, um, which yeah. we may not say about another manufacturer, but for Subaru, it's Completely, good. yep. It's good. Um, then the Mazda 3, right? I think Mazda is often overlooked. Mm -hmm. Like I always say, if you said to somebody, list me 10 car brands, mm -hmm. I bet they don't include Mazda. Hmm. And I always say it's like this fly under the radar car that's so great. Mm -hmm. um, the key to the Mazda 3 is it's entertaining to drive. It does. It yeah. is small. It is fuel efficient at 30 miles per gallon, but it's entertaining. And that's usually that vroom vroom thing that Mazda <laughs> used to say is kind of true say still. About oh, yeah, zoom zoom, and yeah. as we put it, I'm using our words here from content. It's a half a class above its rivals yeah, in terms totally. of so much so that we often say Mazdas are great alternatives to their luxury counterparts, if mm -hmm. you will. They're a great option. I just want to add to this Mazda three. Again, I go back to force. If you're looking for a car for a young driver, this when we prepare our best cars for young driver, right. it's always on the new and it's always on the used. Mm -hmm. Look for a Mazda 3. And it looks cool. They may not even dislike driving it. <laughs> well, I, I think you're burying the, lead, burying the lead on all this. These are not expensive cars. Right. right. Oh. Forrester and the Crosstrek right. exactly. and, and the Mazda 3. I mean, you can get yes. around $25,000 exactly. in all of these. Yep. And I think to all those things you said, right. it's like- And you can you, afford it. It's good value. Just because for that price doesn't mean you're getting something junky. No. Right? You know, you've got these vehicles that are comfortable and quiet and sporty yep. and safe and yep. have all that stuff. So, I mean, I think that's, I mean, obviously the average price of cars are very expensive and there's a lot of new expensive cars, but if you know where to look, you could get a lot of value. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah totally. And you may get better value. Again, going back to, because not everybody's looking at the well, Mazdas. Well, They're right, looking at right. the Toyotas well, the other or the Hondas. One, just yeah. like you said, Forrester has got a new one coming right around. Right. Yes. So yeah. get the old one. Yeah. Right. Because again. It's probably not going to be that different. So that much different. <laughs> You're just going to save some You'll money. Which isn't happy. a bad thing. It's just reality, yeah. the way they do Correct. it. Right. Um, yeah. So, okay. So that's that's our list. And, um, you know, 10 vehicles on there. And yeah, covering the, the gamut from EVs, plug-ins to, to gas only. Expensive, inexpensive, relatively anyway. So. Um, check out more on CR.org. Um, but before we move on to further uh, questions from our viewers, Jake, we also have to talk about brand report card, right? Brand we, report card. We put out some of these lists related to brands and whatnot. Yes. Um, so the marketing us, period is over. Yeah. <laughs> what is this uh, list? And also, how does it differ from our other lists? Well, I think so. So first of all, there's a lot of lists yeah. when it comes to brands, right? And we put out, you know, the most reliable brands, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, to know Toyotas and Lexuses. And then we talk about the most satisfying mm -hmm. brands, mm -hmm. you know, and we hear, you know, people who buy Rivians, for right. instance, or like really love those cars. Right. This is going back to what you're talking about overall score. Right. This is the time where we're saying overall, everything about the car, yep. what are really the best brands? Mm -hmm. Let's throw it. And, and you know, it, it's, it's so funny because I was like, oh, you love these cars or you love those cars. I was like, no, we're just laying out the facts here. Yeah. Right. And when it comes down to it, you know, when you look at the best brands, yes, we say a lot about Toyota reliability, mm -hmm. but Overall, Toyota isn't the best brand. Right. You know, we talk about Rivian. Certainly, they're not the best brand when you <clears throat> consider everything. Yeah. So when you consider everything, what you wind up with is is this brand list. And mm -hmm. what raises to the top are different types of vehicles. BMW, for Correct. instance. Right at the top. These are vehicles. The reliability is decent. Mm -hmm. The cars, the way they drive, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You look at Subaru. Right. They're right up the, they're, they're the top of the list. And... Um, you know, again, they're, they are a lot of value, mm -hmm. very um, more reliable, and, you know, they do a lot of things really good. Yeah. So so BMW, um, uh, Subaru, and then down at the bottom of the list, you have automakers that, you know, yeah. again, the reliability, the, you know, look at Land Rover sure. or Jaguar, right. you know, they're really not, you know, making the great cars. Yeah. So I, I would say, so so we actually did make a change this year. Um, the list is is free whether or not you're a member or not yeah you awesome. go to the website you could see where they they line up mm -hmm. and, and understand why right yep and i do think just worth 
doubling down, I guess, or, or explaining, these are for new cars, right? We're not right. talking about right. going into BMW's history. Right. We're talking about right. a BMW that you can buy now. That's right. right. Or That's right. Brands. Yeah. I mean, the way we do, we do the calculations is actually pretty simple. We take mm-hmm. all of the overall scores of the cars that are on sale right now. Mm-hmm. We average yeah, it. Yeah. And that's where this list comes from. Yep. I Absolutely. think it's interesting. One thing about brand report card, just yep. a little yeah. tidbit, yeah. is it's very interesting to see the brands that make four models or a Toyota that might be a little further down on the list that makes 24 models. So and yeah. how the average, you know, yeah. can be really concentrated on a very few models. Right. Or it can be really spread over an entire vehicle lineup, yep. like Toyota yep. or or Honda or right. Subaru. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can tell, we have a ton of information on reliability, satisfaction, yes. all of it together, and all these different types of vehicles, like what's on our list. So head to cr.org for more on that. Um, and and now we're going to get into. We have another question from a Talking Cars viewer, and we love it when you send our um, your questions. So you can send those to talkingcars at icloud.com. Um, so we have James from uh, Chicago. Uh, he says, I've done over 22,000 food deliveries over five years on various food delivery apps. Um, I have a 2013 Honda Civic EX Coupe with 230,000 miles. I've averaged about 35,000 miles a year, and the car still runs well and has been great. Uh, but I need to consider a hybrid in the future because I get 25 to 28 miles per gallon when I do this type of driving. Uh, the two cars I'm considering are a Toyota Corolla hybrid all-wheel drive and a Prius all-wheel drive. I can't do a plug-in as I live in a condo. I'd also consider a Mazda or Subaru, but it has to have great fuel economy and reliability and would prefer all-wheel drive and a moonroof that can open. Help me decide. All right. So, Jen, we'll start with you. Okay. So, here's my logic. I said for James Prius all-wheel drive Hmm, interesting and the reason i said that is one 51 miles per gallon Mm -hmm. he's gonna get way more than he's getting now even though in his honda and because he's a food delivery person hatchback versatility i don't know how big the orders are that james has to deliver i assume at times it's a big order yeah for a party or something and maybe the hatchback you fold the seats down might be easier than a truck in Mm -hmm. the corolla and He's probably in places he's not used to driving. He's in the city of Chicago. Blind spot warning and rear cross traffic warning. Standard on the Prius. Ooh, good one. Optional on the Corolla. That's why the Corolla Unless you get the, the XLE mm. top trim. That was my okay. logic for James. Great logic. Jake? Some good advice. I yes. don't. Maybe we just really? do we even want to hear yours. Can we start? <laughs> Mike, I don't think you really want to. I, the only thing I would point out is that... Um, Look, I, I, th- I think I'm I'm on Team Prius right now too. But um, you know, in terms of the cost, keep in mind that Corolla hybrid all-wheel drive. I mean, it comes down to the Corolla or the or the Prius because mm-hmm. the fuel economy right. is just amazing. Yep. The issue is that you know between like around 45 miles per gallon and 50 mi- miles right. per gallon, it's, it's not. A, it's really a splitting hairs. Mm-hmm. You're 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 so fuel efficient with that Corolla. That you know, yeah. If you figure out your gallons used per year of whatever right. your mileage is, it, it's actually not. It, a it's huge not going to pay back. So, so I mean, in terms of you know, it, it costs about forty five hundred to five thousand dollars difference between those two vehicles. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, if you want to get a payback in ten years, it's five hundred bucks a year mm-hmm. that you would have to save. You know, I, I took a look at you know gas prices in Illinois. It's three fifty a gallon. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not going to save five hundred dollars w- worth of gas a year. It's going to mm-hmm. be closer to right. like you know half of that. Right, right. So you're you're going to talk about you know fifteen to twenty years if you really want to go pay, pay mm-hmm. back. Um, but if you want to go and you know enjoy the hatchback and, sure. and the other yep. things about that car, mm-hmm. go for it. They're both great op- options. So I'm actually on Team Corolla a little bit. Um, <sighs> And I like the hatchback considerations, but I'm thinking more about James getting in and out of the car a bunch, yeah. right? To deliver and pick up the food. Yeah. The Prius is so low and those, if we're talking about a new one, right? And right. A pillars are so raked back yeah. that you're, it's just kind of hard yeah. to get in and out of this thing over and over mm. and over. Yeah. So yeah, you might prioritize James getting in and out as opposed to putting the food in the trunk. So he'll have to you get a back seat. You got a back seat. James, I, again, if you know. are young and bendy, it's okay to <laughs> it's get okay. the Prius. <laughs> yeah. How, yeah. How much food are you, I guess, taking? You know, now, now, I don't know. I am just easy here. Like, and now I'm going on to team, team Corolla because the trunk in the Corolla is pretty big. You're you probably so put a lot of food. indecisive. Yeah, oh, 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 I got a good one. I just thought about this. If you put it in the trunk, the whole car doesn't smell like that food. 
So the problem with the Prius is that it, depending Unless on- Unless you want it to. Unless, yeah, well, then you put it in the back seat. But then you get hungry and you wind up eating some of it. And <laughs> right. then it really hurts down right. your tips, I think. I would also say if you're, you are driving a bunch in the city and at like intersections and, you know, Jen, we've been talking about this a lot yeah. lately. The visibility, visibility out of yeah. the Prius is not the best because of, again, those A-pillars. So yep. a Corolla just might be easier to navigate in these situations. I don't know what this exactly looks like for him, but- James, you um, yeah, could have given us cars do. that were further apart, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you for um, joining us and going through our list of top picks. Um, this episode was produced by Dave Abrams and edited by Andrew Belise and Anatoly Shumsky. Uh, as always, check the show notes for more information on the vehicles that we've talked about and the topics we discussed. Just as a reminder, please keep those questions coming to talkingcars at iCloud.com. Uh, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.